Take care of yourself. <sighs> well, y'all, it's about 10 at night, 10 30 at night, about an hour, hour and a half ago. We just got home from the uh festival that we went to in vernon florida which was a very fun time a link to the video um, down in the description if you want to see our recap of that but i'm not tired and i can't sleep and and i think it's because i'm so pumped up about this chicken coop build and run build and all the ideas are in my head i just need to get them out i just need to work so my goal tonight is just to start working on the run walls. So, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so I needed this section right here to be my canvas. So got the cow feeder out the way, which works out anyway, because it's time for me to get that back out the pasture. The cows are about to be back on hay pretty soon. And that thing is heavy, but you got to see it being on skids, how I can move it. I've measured it out and right here, we're a little beyond seven feet, which is fine with me, it's okay. I want the walls to be somewhere between seven and eight feet tall. Now here's the thing, this first one that I build is gonna be the template for all of them. And that's because when I make the cut on this board, I'm gonna use that same board to make the cuts on all of the rest of the boards. So all I have to do is, after these cuts are made, is build them out. So all the walls will be equivalent in size and shape and all of that good stuff. Bam. One of the things I want to point out is that this whole section is not going to go to waste once it's cut. I'm going to use those later on in this build and you'll see that. So remember those pieces. <laughs> to put it simply, each eight foot by seven foot section is gonna have three two by fours, one on each end and one in the center. That's gonna be important because when I add the hardware cloth that's four foot wide, I'll be able to put two strips. One strip that will connect to, of course, the top, the bottom, this side piece, but it will also connect to the middle piece. 
stapled. I'm gonna be using staples. And then I'll be able to put the second four foot section that will connect to the top, bottom, be stapled to the side in that same middle board. Not only will that make each of these sections very sturdy, but the staples will be hidden from the front view, which is what we care about. So yeah. So what you're about to see me do when I build this, I'm going to have to do 11 times. As I said earlier, how can I make this like Legos? You know, I could have put each post four four by four post in the ground and then built it out section by section or I mean, there's many ways to skin this cat, right? As the saying goes, but I want to work smart, not hard. So, yeah. Now, the last thing I want to add is that each of the two by fours are going to be attached to the two by sixes via Craig. So I'm going to be using the Craig system, the pocket hole screws. You just attach your two by four, drill the holes where you want them or need them. And, you know, you have to adjust this accordingly. So I already have it set for a two by four. And one of the things that I can't stress enough, y'all, is there's special screws for the Craig system. Okay. Now these are blue coat. You see that? Blue coat finish for outdoor or indoor use. Now I'm stressing that you want to use the blue coat because this is an outdoor um, project that we're working on, right? If you use the wrong screw, you are going to cause damage to your build in the long run. And y'all know me, my saying is do it right the first time. So if you're doing an outdoor project, outdoor, make sure you have the blue coat pocket hole screws made by Craig. Also, as I mentioned, you want to ensure that you're using these correct pocket hole screws because it's designed to work with the pocket hole that you create with the system. So I also want to show you all this. Once again, there's many different kinds of uh, the screws that are made for pocket holes. As you can see, there's a, a blue coat, but depending on what kind of project you're working on, you choose your screw accordingly. All right, y'all, so the final thing that I'll add about these pocket holes and why you want to use the special screws is because, as you can see, the pocket hole goes through there, and you can kind of see two holes there where it's going to come out the other end. Well, the pocket hole screw is designed to be able to go through the holes on this side and out the holes on that side directly into the adjoining piece. The screw is designed in a way that's not going to split the wood. If you try to use a regular screw, which is known as many things, but it, look, it looks like a bugle or like a horn, right, on the end of it. If you try to use one of those, when it goes into this hole and you're driving it into the adjoining piece, because it's not designed for this kind of method, a pocket hole, it's going to split the wood as you drive it. These pieces are going to split, and over time, it's going to allow water damage, and that joint is just going to become weak.
into your heart. All right, y'all. This is number eight. So three more to go. Almost there. It's like two. Almost three in the morning. <laughs> Last one, y'all. So number eleven, and it is three, probably like thirty. But done. About to go get some sleep. We got church tomorrow. All right, and we'll get back to it tomorrow. And y'all see, my dad just landed. So just like the aviary. Came in town right in time. <laughs> Alrighty, y'all. It's the next morning. We just got home from church. A very, very, very good sermon. We're in we're in a series right now about uh, it's titled Tension. Um, but I'm not going to dive into that. If you're interested in that type of stuff, just let me know. That could be the type of stuff we talk about during our uh, lives, which are bi-weekly, every Friday, bi-weekly at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central. But feeling good, ready to get after this day, and I'm super excited because today's going to be a family affair. So Natalie, the girls, Nana, my dad, who's in town now, as y'all know, we're about to get out here and just get after it. So um, today's task, let's go over it. So I have these four by four by 10 posts that I need to get into the ground. And these are all the posts that the walls you saw me build are gonna to attach to. So my goal today is to get all of these into the ground. Then my second goal is going to be to go ahead and well, let me show you. All right. So then my second goal is going to be using this propane and this burner to do shoishugi ban, which y'all know is our favorite, so much so that we had to buy a bigger burner. We about to, uh, we're about to be looking like, you know, the soldiers in World War II or Vietnam with the flamethrower with that bad boy. <laughs> but we're gonna do shoishugi ban and or or AKA the Japanese wood burning technique on the 11 walls of the run that we built last night. We're gonna be doing Shoshugi Ban on all of our bracing. And we're gonna be doing Shoshugi Ban on all of the post, the, ten, uh, the four by four by 10 post that I just showed you. So that's gonna be the goal for today. Um, most likely going to put y'all in, in uh, well, you already know, <laughs> going to put you in, in, a, in a time lapse or to some good music. And I'll stop and update when I feel it's important. One thing I do want to add, and if you've been following us for a while, you already know one of my favorite things to do is to, to go to our local supply store, farm supply store, or feed store and talk to the farmers talk to the to the men and women who have been doing this for decades upon decades upon decades upon decades especially those that are local to this area and one of the things that i asked was hey i'm building a chicken run here's my idea here's my thought process so i explained that all to them the build and all of that and i said these are 10 foot posts and i'm putting three feet into the ground do I need to put cement on these? And overwhelmingly, the people that I spoke to have all said, no, there's no need, um, overwhelmingly. So I'm gonna trust the locals, I'm gonna trust their judgment, I'm gonna trust that they know what they're talking about. 
Um, and I believe that they do know what they're talking about, right? So um, just throwing that out there, if it'll save your fingers from your keyboard, whether it's a laptop, a desktop, or your cell phone, from having to type a comment saying, hey, I didn't see you put cement in those holes. Well, it's not needed for a project like this. And of course, as we always say, and I think I've said it earlier in this video, more than one way to skin a cat, right? So um, ask 10 people, get 10 different opinions. Well, except for the people I asked about this today. <laughs> so there's still gonna be people that say, hey man, you should have put concrete. And that's okay, that's okay. My dad and I got a head start on the post. Uh, as Natalie and I explained in a previous video, the design of this is, let's look at it from the front. This shed, and look at the baby goats coming running this way. <laughs> That's funny. But the design of this shed, it's eight feet by 12 feet. And the run is 24 feet by 32 feet. So on this side of run, from that post to this post is six feet. And on the other side of the run, we have two posts as well. From that post to that post is six feet. So six plus 12 plus six gets us to 24. So now that that's done, the next thing we're gonna do, and you can see my dad, he's getting it started right there. Is we're about to run our string from this pole down that way are 32 feet and we'll dig our post for that. And then from there, we'll run a string from the end there that way, 24 feet. And from that corner back up to meet that post for another 32 feet. In total, we have 18 posts. So the way I see it is four posts down. So that means 14 more posts to go, which when you think about it that way, it's not that bad. And in theory, these next posts should be easy er because they're just simply eight feet apart. The six feet posts, we have to do a, a lot of finagling. So we're about to get to that and then we'll go from there. All right, y'all moving on along. We have two more posts to do on this side. So we're about to put the other one in and then we'll have one more back here and then we'll be going that way and then back that way. But we're making it happen, y'all. The buzz on in my favorite song is playing in a Broadway bar. Then you walk in and you're all alone. The hottest in the room by far. Chest, baby, your lips and your sweet smile. Let me kiss it till I die. For the We've made the turn to this back side. We do see on that wall right there, you could kind of see it. That pole right there, we're going to ratchet strap to make straight, and that pole is just not straight. So, those two, we're going to fix when we hang the walls because that'll be the easiest and best time to fix them so we know exactly what needs to happen <clears throat> but yeah once again now we're on the back wall well the sun's up you wake up angel in the morning light and i don't ever want to leave the bed's messed up just right so we make love and we make plans And God knows that I'm all about it We're up high, never coming down Baby, just you and I For the rest of our lives, yes You and me were meant to be For the rest of our lives, drop your guard And take a ride with me Cause you got what I want I met 
On the graves in the cracks of a thousand leaves, somewhere in between our past and our future rolling over, all the dividing things are you still listening? Want to be heard by you? Slow. Where the cold and the hot meet, and the powers that be
All right, y'all. So we have about 95% of the wood that we want to burn with the uh, shoishugi bond done. I do need a little bit more propane, but as you can see, it's a box right there. That's the box we just took out. Our wire mesh is here. And we have the black mesh. It's the coated mesh. And we went with this for, well, the silver mesh is really shiny, bright. It shows in the sun. This black mesh is supposed to be protected. It's coated. It'll last you a little longer. Plus, from a distance, it actually disappears, quote unquote, disappears in the sun. So you feel like you could actually see through the chicken run or whatever you're using it for. So now, if my plan to build this thing as if Legos works out, all we have to do is cut this into seven feet sections, staple it to the boards you just saw us burn, and then put the walls up. So that's what we're about to get to. We went ahead and cut all the pieces at seven feet. So we have seven foot strips that we're gonna go and staple. Here's the fancy automatic stapler we have. We're gonna staple it to our walls that we built and it should be easy.